Hello, I'm Sabrina Daly. This is a story about a small startup TV station that began on Regent Street in 1991 with a small staff of people who, let's be honest, had little to no television experience. The first employees and later waves of new, skilled and talented people together set and maintained the standard for Belizean television content and production quality. We imported the equipment and expertise we needed, but made it our own to build something Belize had never had before and to create uniquely Belizean programming. Even after we relocated our headquarters to Coney Drive in 2009, Channel 5's information, entertainment and advertising legacy was designed for viewers of all ages and sponsors from all sectors of our emerging economy. As we celebrate our 30th anniversary this December 2021, we invite you to remember your favorite people and programs and to learn how Great Belize Television continues to innovate, now pushing the boundaries between traditional broadcast TV and social media. Our primary goals remain to continuously enhance our coverage capabilities and to keep Belizeans connected wherever we are around the country or around the globe. Everyone that we consulted with, these are other broadcasters in the Caribbean and people who knew the business in the States said, uh, no, you can't, you, you can't start a TV station. It's gonna cost you several million dollars and you need this equipment and that equipment. Um, and you had to have Betacam and all these, these hugely expensive pieces of equipment. And um, I consulted with then um, Rick Romero primarily Rick knew a lot more than I did about television production. And um, we said, you know what? It's not the quality of your equipment that counts. It's the content that you have in your head. It's the writing skills. It's, a, it's, the, it's the technique of the cameraman, of the editors, of the reporters, of the producers. That's what makes a good story. So we threw all this advice about having to spend millions of dollars, threw that out the window. And, you know, little by little, we, you know, we, we, we knew about content, we knew how to tell a story, and we used the tools at hand, and pretty soon uh, all these bigger stations in the Caribbean were looking at us and saying, oh, how did you do that? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. As the climb wears on, yesterday's sore muscles become today's acute pains. The pace becomes noticeably slower, the banter less frequent and less jovial. Day two is not quite as easy as day one. It's only seven kilometers, but it's all uphill. And we're still not there yet. Stuart Crone, the station's founder, first news director, managing director and station manager said, because so much of Belize's news was from foreign sources or politically biased in the early 90s, he knew 
there was a market for a news program that took a different approach. News 5 is the longest running program on Channel 5. From the first year, the station opened. I mean, I can recall shortly after we, we, we went on the air, I was just walking through kind of, oh, not far from our office, but one of the back streets uh, back there on the, on the south side downtown area. And everywhere you'd walk, you'd hear the, the um, you know, the little, um, the jingle we have that Andy Palacio wrote for us initially. Do I have to do that, Marlene? Da 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 da. And you'd walk down the street, and you would hear it coming out of every house. And when I heard that, um, it made me—I mean, it made me happy because you've got a lot of, of eyeballs on the on the screen. But it it reminded me that there's a huge responsibility involved. If if this is the way most people in Belize were suddenly getting their news, you can't just put out any old junk out there. And in charge of making sure there was only quality going out over the air was and is production manager Rick Romero. He has been instrumental in shaping Channel 5 news coverage, programming and advertising. And he has worked with pretty much everyone involved in the behind the scenes aspects of television broadcasting here for the last 30 years. So in early 1991 when Stewart decided to go into broadcasting, that's when, you know, started hiring people and everybody started to become excited about this Channel 5 coming on air. But besides who you see in front of the camera on, on the TV sets at night, the reporters, um, the show hosts, um, you know, there's also a, a lot of set of people working behind the scenes. And, you know, to me, they are as important as the ones who, who are in front of the camera. Um, so, we've had some great cameramen, editors, since 1991 until now. In those days, there was uh, Marcus Walsh, who came back from the States. He was here in the late 80s, and he worked on Belize All Over series. So he helped us out a lot when it came to how to shoot for news, how to edit for news. Hopton Hemmings came along that same year. Brent Toombs, Alex Ellis. And we've had, of course, George Sillett, who's been here from almost the beginning. And we've had people who started working as master control operators and became cameraman editors, such as Daryl Miguel and Chris Mangar. Also, we had um, our engineering department. Um, Enrique Calis was, was one of the first on board. After that, it was Paul Evans, Dudley Craig, and now we still have um, Luis Sosa. And besides those guys, there's also the master control operators who make sure that Channel 5 is on the air throughout the day. You know? Central America with the longest barrier reef in the New World. After eight years as a statutory body and over 50 as a government department, the country's oldest radio station, Radio Belize, is making its final curtain call. According to Minister of Broadcasting Mark Espat, draft legislation that would wind up the BCB is almost complete and should be presented to the House of Representatives shortly. Though many came along to see a fight, by far the bulk of the competition had no physical contact at all. Participants were judged on kata, a kind of lethal ballet, where the dancers postured, threatened, and then attacked an imaginary opponent. Whenever News 5 has to go behind prison, it is usually bad news. A breakout, a beating, or even a fire. Today, however, is different. 
because Baka Baptist is a scene of a baptism. The Belize Central Prison is visited by various religious denominations on a regular basis, all with the intent to offer a change in the lives of the inmates. Today, eight men went behind the usual rites of prayer and were actually baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, a News 5 Live remains of murdered man found days later in Belize City. San Pedro police investigate death of a young woman. And tour guides say Causeways key to port project that could give them a lot of business. Details of those stories and more coming up in tonight's newscast. Well, that's just me, Ernesto Vasquez, reminiscing of how I used to read the news here many, many years ago on Channel 5. Good evening. Welcome to News 5. I am Ernesto Vasquez. It's a greeting that has become familiar to thousands of Belizeans. Since December 9th, 1991, every weeknight at 6.30, myself or one of our other anchor persons has brought News 5 into your home or wherever you happen to be watching TV. I've always loved it. I mean, that was my first love, uh, broadcasting. I was lucky to get training. Um, in, in, in various areas, UWI, BBC, in the U.S. over the years. We were still a colony of Britain, so we, we got around. But if you want to get into the business, you need a good handle on, on the English language, a good handle on who the people are in Belize, because there's nothing more shows your ignorance and you mispronounce somebody's name or a village's name in your own country. Located in Belize, the village of Santa Rosa is home to some 20 Guatemalan families. But this small community is expected to play a significant role in the settlement of the Guatemalan claim to Belizean territory. I have to say because of being a journalist, I have been to places and met people that I never would have met were it not for this job. I'm talking, you know, way back a bush, <laughs> way out the key, you know. The, the smallest villages, the smallest um, communities, but that ha had the biggest stories. And um, I loved being able to be out there in the field and, and documenting it and seeing what life was like. What meat are you eat a day? Four. Four? Every day? Yeah. You ever eat four meat pie? Yes. That nice and this or? Well, to me, <clears throat> I eat it because it's nice sometimes. Oh? Yeah, and I like this one. Sometimes it, it, this one is hot and bun, and I like when it's hot and bun. Mmm, tastes so good. While the debate over who makes the best meat pie in Belize continues daily in the schoolyards, those who make the pies feel each company's product is unique. The secret seems to be in the spices. Although Mr. Paul declined to speak with us, his faithful customers were more than willing to speak for him. And which meat pie do you think is the best in Belize? Um, Paul meat pie. Would you say you buy from here every day? Yeah. About how many a day? About $10 worth every day. Right now, I think a lot more testing needs to be done before I decide which pie is the best. Hot. This is Janelle Chinona reporting for News 5. I would say that the biggest stories that we did, um, the ones that had maybe the most impact, were when the girls were murdered by the so-called Jack. Um, that was pretty horrific, pretty traumatic for the community, for journalists, for everybody. Um, and then it just ended and we still don't know why. Um, the, covering the Belize Guatemala talks to the OAS facilitation process was very exciting. Everybody was very optimistic. That was beginning around, you know, 2000 and odd. Um, we honestly thought there was going to be this big resolution and the claim would be behind us. The newscast was a lot shorter. It was half an hour, so that was about 15 minutes of news. We did a lot of features back then. We did a lot of environmental things and cultural pieces and People really looked forward to the end of the newscast to balance off some of the more harrowing things that were happening. I think maybe when crime was really bad, people needed those things more. Um, they needed some counterbalance and, and some community building. So I think those stories were really important. The social media has put a lot of pressure on the way we gather news. 
because there's a huge temptation to jump on the bandwagon and publish things and recirculate things that came from somewhere else without necessarily taking the time to stop and verify, is this true, put a little critical thinking, is this even plausible? Um, so sometimes my job is to put the brakes on the train and keep it from jumping the track. And that's um, not a very popular job <laughs> when everybody wants to go faster, 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 faster. Um, there's a lot more competition, but it's very uneven competition because the digital only news sources don't have to do a newscast. Radio does, newspaper produces a paper, but the digital people basically cover something, there's a hit, they move on to the next trending item. But I'm hoping that ultimately the audience, after they read all the Yeriso and the Fum Fum and whatever's happening out there in social media, that they come to us and want to see what really happened. Among those finding out what really happened is reporter Dwayne Moody. He recalls the massacre of the George Street Four in January 2013. I remember um, the media core was out talking to the then compel Alan Wiley and shots rang out. Great distance, so it does not necessarily have to be it's one block, two block, three blocks from here. So. That is. All you guys are the shots. Yes, those yes, shots. yes, I have heard, and we are responding to that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Darrell. Right there in the middle of the street, and we all panicked. I remember Alan Wiley being pushed into a vehicle by um, the now deceased Henry Jamot and the media running because we felt that, you know, we were under attack, you know? Every day, all people see is the newscast that we put out, but they don't know what happens behind the scenes. Um, sometimes we're thrown into uh, these dangerous situations. There are not a lot of people who are reporters out there. And while we are here to inform you, give you the facts on issues and things that are happening in the country, it's up to you to determine, you know, how you feel about something, your interpretation of it. Um, but we also try to ensure that we don't just give you the crime, we don't just give you the scandals, the politics, but we give you positive things that are happening in your community. It was like a scene out of an adventure movie. Onlookers, mostly from the police department, few family members, and the press equipped with cameras ready to document the moment waited patiently for the helicopter to land at the police training academy in Belmopan. Except that when it touched down, it wasn't an action figure who disembarked. It was the commissioner of police, Chester Williams, and police constable Bernard Ical, the cop who went missing in the jungles of Belize for six days. It seemed like a theatrical conclusion to the ordeal that Ical went through. But when his daughter ran to meet him and he hugged her, for the Ikals, that moment was anything but staged. Chlorex, Chlorex, Chlorex bleach. Your laundry solution, Chlorex bleach. From the beginning, Channel 5's advertisers were right there with us. Our longest running ad is no doubt for Pepper's Pizza. It still runs on Mondays and Wednesdays. Now Pepper's Pizza is doing this. One of the ad and show producers early on was Suzette Zayden. Among her babies are the Gallo cheese ad for Santiago Castillo Limited. Now which cheese do you think you're going to eat all the while? <laughs> and a Benny's promotion featuring comedian Beverly Smith Lopez jumping in the air. Oh, Pat, there's no doubt. Benny's and you, together we can make your dream house come true. Benny's and you, together we can make your dream house come true. Zayden also produced Lauren Damaning. with 
trauma key technology to make and fake the now classic April Fool's Day story of the man-sized giant pineapple grown by a Belizean farmer. An extraordinary pineapple, the likes of which, as far as we know, no one has ever seen. This giant pineapple grown in the Stan Creek district stands six feet tall and weighs close to 500 pounds. It was brought to the market by Hendrick's friend Solomon Morrison, better known as Benji. Well, I had a brother in Stan Creek. He always brings up food for me to sell in the market. And uh, every weekend, he brings me up um, pineapples. Uh, and I bring it to this fellow that I know in the market to sell for me. Is this the first such big pineapple that he has produced? No, he often brings me big one, but never he brings me one big as this one before. How much, how much are you selling it for? Well, I'm selling it for $400. Who do you think would buy a pineapple for $400? Well, I guess if someone, like a tourist, pass here and saw it and in love, love it and like it, I guess they will buy it for that amount of money. And what if you can't sell the whole thing? Would you be willing to cut it up and maybe sell it in pieces? Yes, I think I'll do that if I can't sell it just like this. Benji says the giant pineapple is perhaps the result of his brother's experiment with a new fertilizer produced in Japan. Delroy Kelvin reporting for News 5. And we played it without any disclaimer. And we just yes. played it on April yes. 1st. And, and Delroy was quite good because he was making up this story and he was standing there. But it was really such a tiny pineapple. And the amount of calls that we got the other day, yes. people wanting to know where the pineapple was. Yes, that <laughs> we was were playing funny. with technology. Chroma key was very new for us. So we th those were stuff. Then we used it again in creating the um, intro for the Lauren Amani show. Where we had Lauren being Superwoman flying. We yes. had her lying on a desk in the studio. So we, we tried to incorporate a lot of technology, stuff that I had learned abroad and stuff that Rick had known, and then we combined it together. And so he was game for everything. But we said, I believe, Buma Shine. No, Mr. Peters, I want to welcome you here this morning. Yeah. I want to know how much I appreciate your comrade because then we definitely feel like I can't get you for compa my show, but then I know we're a partner. That's right. We're a partner That's a long right. time, right? And yeah. Mr. Ruben, thank you very much for coming. Okay, thank you. Too. I know I had to gang out, drag you out to your bed, don't you, boy? No, man. I learned a lot, lot, lot of lessons. One, there are people out there who are doing stuff that we would call um, untold heroes. And people want to participate. People want people to know what they're doing. And people just love to have somebody of their own to be their hero, you know. And so, because I did the show, many, 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 many people knew me. As, as a matter of fact, they still shout for me, Lauren the morning, or Lauren the night, and when they see me, they still laugh. So. It was a wonderful time for me because then um, I was like on top. Children were there. She, whenever I was on the street, they would be calling to me. I would hug them, love them, you know, and just just be who I am. But I hear what I believe a crocodile yam or a whole man. You uh, remember that story, William? No. There's a crocodile yam or a whole man. Uh, well, yes, yes, Larry, I remember now. It, all right. So then that's a one liar story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I said that over eight feet, they can be dangerous. Oh. They, they will eat. The oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How much you think it costs to buy one license right now if you want to buy one license? To buy? Eh, ma. Hmm. You put me in a tight spot, but um, mm, I believe you could should go somewhere else to answer that question. You land fast, man. Two, three, four. Good. Look where you're going to start a straight list there. Straight, yes. Look ahead. That's lovely, you see? Yes, you see, you don't land to judge. The biggest impact I think it was, it was a relief for people. People were able to laugh. I made up my own words that even some of the words weren't in the dictionary, but the children went to school and made, and made sure that they put it in their essays and in their stories. So the teachers would call me and say, Miss Larry, you can't use their word there. You know their word, they're not so, so word. They picked in, they put their word in, and then thing you have to explain to them that then their word they're your own, you know. <laughs> Um, it brought joy, it brought people would get up in the morning, just can't wait for Silara in the morning. You know, I knew that I was making an impact on the community for them to have a better life. Kind of um, social, social commentary, 
we had games, we had quizzes, we had prizes. Listen to me, it was a wonderful time in my life and I am so blessed that I was able to do that. Anyway, all you people out there, wake up, get up and walk on all bright eyed and brush your tail, guess what happened? This morning, I never feel to wake up, guess what, I oversleep. Two early to six, I wake up, but now I saw a drop or a fast bath, catch the fresh and move on just like that. Anyway, I hope that, by the way, no, no, they're not really oversleep. Try catching the tea and just shatter today. I have to keep the monologue shot today because I don't know what happened. William looked like he going to christening or he got out last night. I know he got home. I dressed right up in our satin back. Vest up, my dear, our satin back outfit. No, no. Well, I'm dear, William. Your, your Majesty. That also you do it by the dawn garment already. Where are supposed to do it? Your whole back not for Ben. You have to do it with your neck, so only your neck and now not with your whole back. Then you, you, you don't have to bow down like on the bow down, so. Okay, so. Aha, uh -huh. no, right. no, no, not even that to correct anyway, so don't answer to okay, yourself okay. because you can't handle yourself, William. That's why you see. Well, you see. That's why I have to left you. You're going to practice. You're going to practice. <laughs> that's so. why I have to left you home to I have to left you home Wednesday night. So I came back home and I started playing with the blenders and and um, started making up my formulas. And I had about six or eight formulas that I that I uh, came up with, gave them to my friends, tried out on my friends, and the best formula was the one that I stuck with, the one that everybody liked. Why am I late for this Okay, now after that, that is sure, so we have to check it out. Hey, we've got good news for all you Lauren fans. No need for your get up early and no need for your reach work late. Because Lauren has moved to prime time. Every Sunday night from 7 to 8.30. Don't miss it. Lauren the night. Only part five. Why? Me forget to the show up past Sunday night from 7 o'clock to 8.30. Thank 830. God. Me going on my bed, boy. Me not even fooling you. Hello friends, I'm Dr. Bob Roberts with another 60 second sermon from God's Word. And speaking of blessed, Channel 5 viewers have a special relationship with another television personality, Pastor Dr. Bob Roberts. He took a chance on Channel 5 early on as a vehicle for his 60 second sermons. And while his intention was to share God's Word, Viewers have formed a bond with Dr. Bob over the years, giving him both love and inspiration as he localizes the teachings of the gospel. One day we were walking past the uh, studio uh, with a friend of mine, and, uh, and I said, you know, let's just go in and talk to them and just see what the possibilities are. And it happened that, that day that Stuart Crone was there. And, uh, and as we began to talk, I, I said, Stuart, I have a good program, and he interrupted quickly and said, I know, but it's too uh, Western. And I said, well, that's why we're talking to you. We want to try to make it Belizean. The Bible says open rebuke is better than love that is hidden. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are lavish and deceitful. I was on the street there in Belize City one day when a little young guy, 10, 11 years of age, he walked up to me and, and uh, he had been watching me on TV, and so he walked up to me and said, Hello, friends, I'm Dr. Bob Roberts with another 60-second sermon from God's Word. The Bible says, and uh, my, you know, I can't tell you how my heart felt that day, you know, and uh, for him to be able to mimic uh, what I was saying there uh, with those messages and to know that as a young kid that he was listening, cared enough to listen. So we put our full confidence in Channel 5 and Great Police Production by giving to a man several thousand dollars but that I'd never seen before for one year of uh, services there. And uh, that was the greatest investment, I think, that I've ever made in my ministry.
Well, good evening and welcome to the first ever Andy Palacio show. My name is Andy Palacio. And tonight we have a program lined up for you that's full of excitement. The Belizean DJ showcase on the Andy Palacio show continues with two super DJs. Yeah. And what is the, the DJs eh, where we come up and rap? They like work with you. And, and notice that they got for their own kind of language. And I see okay, you can relate to that. I hear they say like wheel up sometimes. How, how, how you that wheel up? Uh, uh, when like? they say wheel up, it mean like, all right, the music they play right now. Yeah. And they say wheel up, we just want. That, that, that what you mean by wheel up, right? All Automatically right. You just pull it back away. This is my co-host, I.C. Craig. Is that how she'd call you? I.C. Craig? Indoor Craig. I okay. Prefer. Where your name, partner? David Obi. So you're that Juni? Not really. I don't like you go by Juni. <laughs> Over the last 30 years, Channel 5 viewers have grown up, displayed their talent, and even gotten married with us. Ooh! <laughs> All right. We introduced reality TV to Belize, and we are so proud our audience members have turned out to see each other perform and to celebrate all facets of the Belizean cultural experience. We have also given a local spin to popular programs launched elsewhere, like The Apprentice and From Yes to I Do. But perhaps nothing was as popular as KTV. Coming up next, right here on Channel 5. From Club Calypso at the Princess Hotel and Casino, it's Channel 5's Karaoke Television. also an opportunity to find new faces from different pockets of Belize that perhaps would never hit a, a, a national stage. And whether it was, you know, uh, Tanya, Ernestine, Denise Castillo, Tremet Perriot, you know, Rojani, you could all see the difference and the stress that came along with that, but it was a good kind of stress. It was a challenge that had our performers growing. And I had grown up also with a lot of these people.
you heard me, I, I want to do. Oops, there goes my shirt up over my head. Oh, my. Want to look up to. I never found anyone who'd fulfill my needs. A lonely place to be. And so I learned. Angelo Fabro. Each venue tended to be a little bit larger until we ended up at The Bliss. And I think that really gave me an opportunity to grow and to learn how to manage the crowd and to walk that delicate kind of a hybrid kind of existence because you have a live, live audience that gives you energy and makes the performers also feel as if though they're doing it for somebody but you also have the audience at home that you want to appeal. Finishing in second place is... And so, on the final night, the public spoke. Maureen Boudram. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our champion for KTV. You know, all those things 
were the perfect kind of, a perfect mixture for, for these shows to actually work within the Belizean context. Always highlighting that Belizean context were Channel 5's thought-provoking talk shows, beginning with Spotlight and one-on-one -on -one with Dickie Bradley. Welcome back to One on One, one of the living legends in the Caribbean and where music is concerned, a man who has carried our name to over 47 cities in the world, is our guest tonight and we'll be joined later on by Cindy Lewis as well and we talk music, calypso and a whole host of matters. Byron Lee, welcome to the show. Good evening, Dickie. I'm very glad to be on your very famous program I've heard so much about and it uh -huh. is an honor for me to be here. Right? Well, the honor is all ours. <laughs> Home for many years at Channel 5 was Amalia Mai. She reflected on the station's accomplishments in February 2021 when she left for a new role in government. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We broke all the ceilings, we shattered all the glasses together. So um, that's a big satisfaction. Um, regionally wise, winning all the awards, you know, beating companies like in with huge investments like in Jamaica, in Trinidad, huge populations like in Cuba, mm -hmm. smaller populations the size of Belize in the Caribbean. Um, but we were always on top. Every August, my greatest pleasure was going to the CBU meeting. And then there were awards in between, you know, that were not necessarily through the, through the, uh, at the, in the region, but certainly the Channel 5 and the staff here have always stood out. In fact, every year, Channel 5 is the most recognized media house at these regional awards, even for our 2020 coverage during the pandemic. And the award goes to Great Belize Productions Channel 5 for the benefits of a migrant community, Spanish Lookout. Frank Barkman and his family were some of the first Mennonites who came to settle in the then British Honduras way back in the late 1950s. Thousands of Mennonites left their homes in parts of Russia and Canada to live in Mexico. Our judges would also like to make special mention of the piece Long Road to PSC in Southern Belize by Isani Cayetano, Kenro Michael and Rick Romero of Great Belize Productions Channel 5. And the award for best television commercial spot goes to Great Belize Productions, Channel 5, for the Sgt. Pepper's Pasta ad. From pizzas to pastas and burgers to wings, you find so many choices at Sgt. Pepper's. And the award goes to Great Belize Productions, Channel 5, for the serious and growing problem of obesity. We have a problem with obesity. Even more concerning is it has started to affect our children. And the award goes to Great Belize Productions Channel 5 for the neglected HIV vulnerable population. The Ministry of Health statistics is showing persons 50 plus, 65 plus positive HIV. And the award goes to Great Belize Productions Channel 5 for Corona the Hawks Bill embarks on an information gathering journey. A hundred plus pound Hawks Bill turtle, estimated to be older than 70 years, Corona the Hawks Bill turtle 
is on her shell, flapping on the beach in Gales Point, Manatee. She's impatient to get on with her journey, but a small team of turtle conservationists can't allow her to leave just yet. Corona, the Hawksbill, must be fitted with a small tracking device that will gather important information about her journey that will help to monitor her species that's critically endangered across the world. Welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning right. I am William Neal. And I'm Marlene Coyar. And thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning and welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning right. I'm Marlene Coyar. And I'm Gavin Courtney. And thank you for joining us this morning. It's a bit of a... Wet and for almost half of Channel 5's history, our morning program has stood out as viewers started their morning right with Open Your Eyes. Host Marlene Cuellar has been joined by co-hosts William Neal, John Palacio, Gavin Courtney, Isani Cayetano, and most recently, April Martinez. Viewers will recall so many outstanding guests of all ages and backgrounds who have been invited on by our producers to inform and entertain you. <laughs> no, I don't have a, an issue holding this thing. I just uh, <laughs> don't like the feel of it. I really don't. was add the bark leaf to that and then I'll be putting some onions in there. Mmm, smells so good. And onions do bring out that flavor. Mm -hmm. So we get debt forgiveness and at the same time setting up monies for conservation. So it's a win-win for, for us as Belize and for Mother Earth. Um, And we're back. And Just like that, we are back and we're moving into another segment here on our 13th anniversary special of Open Your Eyes. Are you ready? Gav, you ready? Oh, you definitely. look like you're ready. For sure. Yeah. In November, <laughs> Open Your Eyes you celebrated ready? a remarkable right. 13 years <laughs> on air. Happy yeah. anniversary, Open Your Eyes. What? Oh my goodness, it is that time oh, of day. Right. Oh. What I do know, having had all that exposure and time here with um, especially the team that's been here so long, is that the previous managers and CEO um, have all laid such a solid foundation for where we are now at our 30th anniversary. Um, it has come with a lot of growing pains, um, as some I've witnessed and some I've been told about uh, through conversations with them, and it now puts us in a position as a company to be able to be appreciative of what they have been able to accomplish and gives us a solid foundation to grow from. We have been leaders in the entertainment programming and it really is an opportunity once we're able to get ourselves out through the pandemic phase to be able to expand on that. There's so many more opportunities for new programs in this country catering to different audiences and the young people crave something different children crave something different and we have people who still want to hold on to uh, what have always been or traditional shows it's absolutely crucial to maintain the uh, the core principles of the company which we talk about and we still see um, with our logo each time that we keep on leading that we keep on innovating and that we keep on connecting with our viewers and our wider community. That's the start, and it's keeping that going. The other part is that our main responsibility are to the people who choose to put on Channel 5, whether every single night or every morning, and for all the other programs that we have in between. Our relationship with them has grown over the years, and that has allowed for the company as well to grow even in meeting 
the new viewing patterns that people have. So we cater to those who still prefer traditional um, appointment TV, and we cater to those who prefer to be watching on the go, people who shifted entirely from cable and, and stream directly on smart TVs. We change along with them. And, and that's very significant of your 30s, right? Um, you, you understand so much more of uh, the growth that has taken place and the growth that will come. And part of that growth is Channel 5's expansion of our programming and production capabilities to include both pre-recorded and live stream events. We have built enduring relationships over the years and are attracting new partners all the time. And of course, our most significant partnership over the years has been with you, our Channel 5 audience. Whether you're sitting in front of a television in Belize or watching us on social media, at home or abroad, we love to see you signing in and telling us, I'm watching. So thank you for watching for the past 30 years, and we hope you stay with us for the many decades to come.